Hello everybody, my name is Christopher Bolduke, and today I will be presenting my research on basic interpersonal communication within a professional workplace. So the first question is, what exactly are interpersonal communication skills? And a really simple definition is basically how well one communicates with others, and it's our quote unquote people skills. And for us, what this means in the music world is how we react and interact with our colleagues, people higher up, and people below us. So there's six main components of interpersonal communication skills. Uh, the first one is the communicator. This refers to both the sender of the communication and the receiver. There are at least two communicators at all times involved in interpersonal communication skills. It's generally in the workplace. The second one is the message. One of the most important parts of interpersonal communication skills is the message. It can be conveyed in many ways. Speech, body language, tone of voice, gestures, and other indicators. Nonverbal messages provide additional information that may not be readily apparent through these words. The third one is the noise. This refers to any distortion that causes differences between what is received and what is sent. Examples of noise include jargon, language barriers, inattention, and more. So even in our day and age now, it'd be something like internet lag. The next one is feedback. Feedback is the response of the receiver. So in other words, what that means is it's the message sent back to the sender. This allows the sender to know whether the message has been received and interpreted correctly. So if I'm talking to the class, I know that I'm getting good feedback. If the class looks engaged, they may be nodding here and there, listening to what I'm saying and seeming like they're engaged. And if not, then you need to maybe change the way that you're presenting it, something like that. The next one is context. Whether a message is received and interpreted correctly depends largely on the context. The emotional climate and expectations of the people, the place of occurrence, and the social, political, cultural, and environmental conditions all comprise context. The last one is channel. Finally, this component refer refers to how the communication actually occurs. A message is sent and received through a specific channel or medium. So this can be things like presenting in a lecture hall, a concert hall, online, or however it would get to you, the information. All right, so effective workplace communication allows a business to run smoothly. Now our business as musicians is a little different than the standard business, but we still have to interact and work with our colleagues to make effective music. So effective workplace communication allows and facilitates operations to run effectively and accomplish core goals. This underlies the efficiency of the business functions. So generally, when if you look at the top right picture with the quality, speed, and cost. The more, the better the quality and the more efficient it is generally means the most expensive. Now when things are slower, the cost is less, lower quality, and you can crank them out faster, so faster speed. So I would say the most effective way would be somewhere in the middle where you can have quality speed and cost all running effectively personally for me and i think personally for us as musicians uh you know money makes a difference but artistically i would put quality first now the bottom two pictures are just an example you know of the first bullet point to a effectively accomplish core goals. You know, the bottom left is the picture of the Berlin Philharmonic Concert Hall, and the right is somebody's, you know, messy garage band. 
So we want to be more like the Berlin Philharmonic Concert Hall, organized, efficient, and running at its best. So the next thing, uh, the next topic here is sub-skills involved in interpersonal communication. The first sub-skill, uh, quote-unquote, would be problem-solving and decision-making. Uh, one of the best ways to maintain professional relationships is through effective problem solving and decision making. Both of these skills align team members towards a common goal. If leaders are unable to take the steps necessary to solve the problems and make the right decision for the team, a business can function successfully. So you need to have, for what for us, that means you need to have colleagues that you can talk to and work together towards a higher goal, and you need to know how to work with them. The next one is listening. Strong listening skills are invaluable and very important for business professionals. They help individuals understand sent messages and act accordingly. If a manager or somebody higher up provides instructions, but team members are unable to listen and synthesize this information, roadblocks will arise that can derail the project and make everything not work efficiently. Listening is also important for us as musicians. You need to be, for lack of a better word, spiritually aware of everybody around. Learn how to communicate with them both musically and in rehearsals when things aren't working uh, or when you have an idea to learn how to say that effectively without really offending anybody and getting your point across. The next one is assertiveness. A commonly undervalued element of interpersonal communication is assertiveness. That is, the ability to influence others help, helps leaders drive the team towards a more common goal. Being willing to take charge and affect change is one of the hallmarks of a business leader. The next one is negotiation. This skill is a key element involved in conflict resolution. Finding common ground and identifying shared goals can help business professionals work effectively with others. Almost all the time as musicians, we're negotiating. Uh, whether it's in the moment, body language, and the way that you want an interpretation to go, um, there's always a form of compromise it can never really be exactly what you want it to be and it can never be exactly what somebody else wants it to be um, so negotiating both on the stage and off the stage is very important for us as musicians now there are quite a few skills to learn these are just 10 of them but uh, I'll elaborate on each one uh, to make you the most effective at interpersonal communication. So the first skill is self-confidence. You need to have self-confidence in the workplace because it can allow you to open doors and help you gain recognition. It's also pretty obvious when somebody is confident and when somebody is not in what they're doing and we pick up on that as humans. Self-confidence can de demonstrate how you approach various situations and deal with them both positively and effectively. To be successful in this aspect, it is important to demonstrate self-confidence in every stage of your career. Uh, how you stand, how you walk, how you talk, what you dress like. That kind of thing needs to be consistent throughout all of your work. Self-confidence at work will improve the way people see you and your views, ideas, and opinions, and your ideas and opinions will be taken more seriously. Confidence will help you when communicating with others, as it ensures you can convey your point clearly and will be listened to. The second skill that, to learn is work ethic. Having a strong work ethic, work ethic is viewed favorably by many recruiters. But what exactly does worth ethic relate to? There's three specific things that work ethic is related to. Professionalism. This incorporates everything from how you present yourself, 
alter your appearance to how you treat others. Respect. All workplaces require you to work under pressure at some time or another. And exercising grace under stress will earn you more recognition. No matter how short the deadline or how heated things may get, always retain your diplomacy and poise. And the third aspect of uh, work ethic is dependability. Employers need to know that they have employees that they can count on. If you are always on time, well prepared, and deliver work when you say you will, this demonstrates your work ethic and commitment to the business. Now the next one is relationship management. Building effective relationships is one thing, but managing them is something entirely different. This is an important skill in many roles, from junior posts through to top management. As musicians, it's actually incredibly important because our work is not necessarily centered upon what degree you have. It does play into it, but what matters is how you interact with your colleagues and how you keep those relationships throughout the years. The next one is receptiveness to feedback. It's especially important for musicians in all aspects, not just the business side of it, but for us musically, that's probably the most important thing to allow us to improve. Uh, but receptiveness to feedback means being open to feedback, which can help you develop both personally and professionally. It's important to view all feedback as a chance to learn and never react defensively, even though it's hard, especially musically when you're talking about something that you're doing. You have to, to separate yourself from the situation and focus on improving instead. To take on board feedback, you must first listen to it. Don't think about your response, just listen to what's being said. It's sort of objective thing. Take on board what you have been told and use this positively to further enhance your performance and pro productivity. It's all about how you take it, but it's important to listen to feedback. And it's also important to be strong on your own, but to know when you can listen to feedback. The next aspect is body language. Nonverbal communication is often overlooked, but don't forget to consider how your body language and gestures could be interpreted. Factors to consider when interacting with others include eye contact, facial expressions, gestures, personal space, posture, and body position. Your body language will often determine how your verbal communication is perceived. In fact, your body language will impact your communication skills more than any other factor. It's especially important for us musicians, of course, how we present ourselves on, on stage, how we interact with the music, and how we interact with the audience. But outside of that, how we interact with our colleagues is very important. And these things in terms of body language are very important to consider and things for us to work on, always. Next aspect is listening. When improving your interpersonal communication skills, the first thing you need to learn is to listen. Failure to listen properly can have disastrous consequences. From failing to follow through a manager's instructions to not completing a customer's request or a donor's request or anything like that. Active listening, which is very important, is a skill that will help you understand and learn from others and respond correctly to what they're telling you. Giving nonverbal signs that you're actively listening, like nodding, maintaining eye contact, like I said earlier, will build trust as the people you're collaborating with will feel heard and feel like they're included. Next aspect is collaboration. Working collaboratively allows teams to work together productively and deliver positive outcomes for clients and businesses. For musicians, we almost always are collaborating unless it's a sort of solo project. But even then, there's collaboration with managers, with donors, with people that are listening. So collaboration is very important. Collaboration, uh, successful collaboration, requires the ability to cooperate and respect each other. Employers often seek applicants who have proven a proven track record to work su successfully with the team and candidates who are willing to compromise and cooperate to deliver exceptional work. Especially with music, it's important for us to consider that the music isn't about us, but it's about obtaining a higher goal and a higher state to deliver to people. 
being able to collaborate, particularly with challenging situations. That's a great selling point when applying for a job. Something to talk about when being interviewed. Something to show when put on the spot. Present yourself with a positive attitude and communicate your enthusiasm for team building. The next aspect is conflict management. Good conflict management skills include diplomacy, empathy, negotiation, assertiveness, and confidence. Being able to put your views across or defend the views of others when needed in a professional and respectful way is a key skill in the workplace. The next one is positive attitude. Showing positivity, even in difficult situations, is important. Be positive from the moment you fill out the application to your first day of work to the end of it, always. Never say anything negative about your current or past employer, even if you feel strongly about it. Employees with a positive attitude are more likely to treat others positive, which creates a more harmonious work environment. And just in life, if you surround yourself with positive thoughts, generally it'll be shown. And you have to keep surrounding yourself with those in order to effectively navigate life in a decent way. Uh, the last one uh, of the skills that are helpful to learn is uh, workplace etiquette. How you come across to others can speak volumes. Learning workplace etiquette is a great way to leave a lasting impression on those you meet. Always be aware of your posture. Ensure that you stand up straight and make eye contact. Turn towards people when they are speaking and smile genuinely at them. Follow dress code. Always dress well. Uh, make sure that you have proper accessories or the lack thereof when needed. Also ensure that you demonstrate kindness and courtesy and arrive in good time every morning, every night, every time you have some sort of job. It's especially important for musicians because, you know, people can generally be late to work sometimes. Uh, but we can't be late to the show when it starts. So being on time is very important. And it also shows a lot to your colleagues. So how to really improve interpersonal communication in the workplace? It's up to you uh, to determine this. And you have to research and plan. Always have goals. You have to determine your audience, who you're working with, who you're working for what you're doing, what sort of goal you have, and figure out what you want to do with that. You should constantly, not all the time, but uh, always be aware of yourself and evaluate yourself in the way you react and interact in certain situations. And those things that you've planned, you monitor their expectations, see how they're going. If they don't go exactly as planned or if they're not really going all around or along a track that you would want them to, it's time to self-evaluate, go back to step one and research and plan and start again. So that's the uh, end of this presentation. These are my, uh, this is my bibliography and cited sources. Interestingly enough, there's a lot of books and information written on this. I guess it's a very important aspect, not just to us as musicians, but to everybody that has to work in the world. So this was a really kind of an interesting journey. I learned a lot of things. These are just basic overall uh, concepts, but there are a lot of very detailed books and lots of access to information online if you're interested in getting more specific. Thanks for listening.